so since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to put down my notes. Um, and I thought we'd start with Wendy uh, talking about Yoda because he was one of the first puppets in a Star Wars movie, and she sculpted it and worked with Stuart Friedman. I did work with Stuart Friedman. In fact, I was uh, already working on Dark Crystal when I was uh, lent out to the Star Wars film to work on Yoda, on this little puppet. We really didn't know what it was going to amount to. We had no idea that he would become such an iconic character. Absolutely no idea. I came there for two reasons. One was to build a, a puppet that Frank Oz could um, use as a practice puppet so he could develop the character. And I did that by sculpting it out of a block of foam rubber, and I sniffed it with scissors and razor blades. And, yeah, and just um, made a puppet that looked basically like what they had already started developing through sculpt and through uh, uh, drawing. And then after I finished that and Frank had started using it, I also came in to sculpt the head of Yoda to get exactly the kind of character they wanted. When I was finished with that, Stuart Freeborn came back in and sculpted it uh, to change the, the wrinkles so the mechanics looked good. But then he also make it look more like him? He didn't, no. I was a rumor that went around that Yoda was supposed to look like Stuart. No, that was my... Did you I was that? in a room with him. He was there the whole time, so he couldn't help it. <laughs> he, didn't really look like he, he wasn't green, but he did. It does, it does. It just, yeah, was just, just happened. Just happened. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, then we developed it as one of the, the first foam latex head puppets with mechanics in it, and it was also a trial run for the puppets in Dark Crystal, because we hadn't seen them on screen before, we didn't know what they'd be like, and it was very interesting. We didn't realize that, yeah. wow, so it was almost a prototype for it, what happened yeah. in Crystal. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I didn't even know that. Ooh, there you go. I worked on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, how did Frank, because the puppeteers, if you guys are puppeteers or you know any puppeteers, they're very particular about, particularly when they're trying to get a very detailed performance, how much did you have to work with Frank to get uh, the mechanics, or you weren't so involved in that, or was the skull? I wasn't really involved in the mechanics. Uh, we had to make sure that it was comfortable for his hand inside. It had to be uh, of a size that would be uh, easy for him to puppeteer. He had quite a big hand. And um, Kathy Mullen helped with that. She also helped puppeteer. She was the uh, right handed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, was the, I was the manipulator of the ears. They did. I wasn't able to work on that one. I was just ill at the time. But, but yes, yeah, yeah. Wow, very cool. Is there anything else that you'd like? To, we have very short time. Sorry. No, just it was it was an amazing character to work on, and as I said, we had no idea what he would turn into. We had no idea that he was that wise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so uh, then we're going to segue to more uh, Star Wars creatures. Uh, they said great slides, so I just brought a few. This is actually the entire crew of ILM in 1981. Um, and people ask about rubber versus digital. I'm specifically talking about creatures, not spaceships. Um, we didn't make them out of rubber. Uh, it, that was the entire crew, minus maybe eight people who didn't show up on picture day, just like junior high. Um, <laughs> I'm up there, kind of, you go straight up. Uh, I've got a beard and a bad haircut, and um, the guy right in front of me with dark curly hair and the beard is Tony McVay, who sculpted a bunch of the creatures for uh, Jedi. Um, anyway, you can see George Lucas, and I, if I had more time, I'd go through more interesting people. Phil Tippett, who ran the shop, is right there, and the guy in the blue shirt is about three people up from uh, this fellow here, who actually ran Island at the time. And then Dave Carson sculpted the pig guard, designed the pig guard. Uh, Phil did the... Um, chess pieces on Star Wars, he did the Tauntauns on uh, Empire, and uh, he designed Jabba and Good Fortuna from Jedi, which you're going to see tonight, and the Rancor Monster. And the Rancor Monster is why I want to talk about it, because I figured I'd give you a little inside info of stuff that you don't really hear about or see about. So next slide, please. Um, oh, this, this is me painting Akbar. Yeah. Uh, I painted it all on Kamar. This was the test one. <laughs> I, uh, again, bad haircut, uh, but I was skinnier, so it balances out. Uh, this was a test head, because I was looking at it going, that's a horrible paint job. And that was the test head we made, because you can see there's bad seaming, and it's kind of ugly. But that's what we were trying out different color schemes on. So the next slide, please. And 
thing for me. That's with all the, all the Akbar heads I've painted. So my, my tasks on Jedi were to uh, uh, mold things. I did some designs, but they were not picked, uh, which I still have a, I still have a chip on my shoulder about George not picking any of my creature designs. But the process, real quickly, was we didn't do so much on paper. We sculpted little maquettes out of sculpting and painted them. So George could actually come in and uh, look at a three-dimensional model and go, I like it. And so we, we had probably 80 of these creatures out, because Jedi, the, we were never given a script, it was all very secretive, so he said, it's a party at Jabba's palace. So we heard of Jabba, and we had a, a sculpt of Jabba that Phil had done, so we just knew it was alien party, so we were designing all sorts of weird creatures. And George came in one day and just went like this, and like this, and like this, and just, you know, these guys, you know, all those take a step to the right, you're in, the rest of you, sorry. Um, okay, so next slide. So I also did some test stuff. In fact, uh, just to tick off a friend of mine, uh, Mike Quinn. Did anyone know Mike Quinn? Yeah. Anyone friends with him on Facebook? Yeah. Okay, St. Kirk said that he puppeteered him. Now it's going to drive him bananas. So this picture came out, and we had a little thing on Facebook. I said, well, I remember I puppeteered him on the Instagram. He couldn't have done No, that's not. No, no, I did. Yeah, not that much. I did. This is a picture of me doing it. It wasn't just set up for a photo. So I wanted him to freak out a little bit. Just a little prank. But, uh, yeah, Kirk said he did him a whole movie. We used this in tech. So those of you guys know, that's welcome. Um, so yeah, so I did a bunch of stuff. So, Mr. so next slide, I think this is me and Salacious. Now that he was sculpted, I puppeteered him in a Jedi special and an insert shot that we did back at ILM. Basically, it's just him like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, That's me without hair and a better haircut. Um, or, I mean, facial hair. Uh, next photo. Now we're getting to Rancor. Okay, so here's the inside scoop. George wanted to do, for some insane reason, Rancor Pit Monster as a guy in a suit like the Godzilla movies. And we were all like, ha, <laughs> right. like, no, I'm serious, George's very quiet boy. Um, he's like, no, I think you guys can do it. And I remember we were in the screening room about a little smaller than this, and, and we were having a meeting, and Phil's like, but that, they look terrible. I mean, Godzilla movies are known for looking goofy. That's why people like them. He's like, I think you guys can do it. I'm going to give you a challenge. So. <laughs> we built, at that time, Rancor, like all of them, was a little maquette. So we had to figure out to build a creature that wasn't built to be a guy in a suit. It had these giant arms, this enormous head. And the suit was built, we had a stuntman come in, who was a strong guy, he was like five foot eight. And we built the suit around him, and put him in it, and he immediately fell over. <laughs> he got in and went, eh. and he just couldn't even stand. So, so, Phil said, well, you get in the suit. I'm like, but, I mean, this wasn't on the day of the shoot or anything, but this was like, you, you try it on just so we can work on it. So I put it on, and suddenly I became one of Phil and I took turns being the guy in the suit. And we never, as you can see, there's a lot of orange foam. We kind of skinned part of it, we made feet. We did the whole costume to see if it worked, and we shot, um, that's Dave Carson on the right, uh, and Phil Tippett on the left, sorry, and I'm this man screaming in the middle because I was aware of the darn thing. Uh, so it was insane, it had these long arm extensions, one eye operated, the other one was operated by a puppeteer behind me. You had to stand like this because he wasn't a guy walking around, he was a creature, right? So it, it was incredible, incredibly difficult on your legs. You're wearing a backpack with about an 80 pound suit on, and you had a 12 pound monitor strapped to your chest. This was probably half of you weren't even born yet, but, but monitors used to be with a, with a tube. So you have this huge monitor, a little black and white screen this big, flipped with a camera pointing at you, but when, as anyone puppeteers knows, if you turn right, he turns left. And if you're in a set, you can see here, with uh, very low ceilings, so he would look big. So it was an impossible task. And I think my joke was Phil put me in the suit so George would realize it was a bad idea. Um, so, the next slide. <laughs> That's, these are silly. These are just pictures you'll never see anywhere else. This is me with the legs on going through the storyboards, looking like that traditional fad, you know, like, yeah, here's the actor going through the storyboard. Um, but you, but why, I like this because you can see the arm extension. Old gorilla suits, and, and even uh, the ones made today, have gorilla's arms are longer than humans, so you'll wear an extension that kind of attaches to your forearm. And the Rancor had these huge claws, so again, how to do that with a guy. So we made these long arm extensions that you could control, sort of like a gorilla suit. And then the final one, just shows how little I weighed back then. <laughs> <laughs> that's Phil Tippett, that's me with the legs on. And I just figured I'd end up something funny. Um, but, uh, yeah.